Well, welcome everyone to our uh, special webinar here. Um, this is Tim Bost with FinancialCyclesWeekly.com, and we're delighted to see a, a, a big crowd uh, uh, coming in to join us here for this e event today. Um, we've had certainly our share of problems, um, most of which I think can be attributed to the Mercury retrograde phenomenon that we're still working through uh, as we speak. Uh, we've had Mercury in retrograde motion now for about two weeks and have a little bit less than a week uh, left to go of the Mercury retrograde uh, phenomenon. We'll be talking about that uh, a bit during our time together for this uh, session here today. Uh, but there's always interesting challenges associated with uh, uh, the Mercury retrograde period. Uh, more often than not, they impact our communications and our um, uh, ability to get from one place to another. I had an interesting experience with Michael Yorba uh, the other day. It was on Friday afternoon uh, when we um, got our uh, weekly telephone call going on his uh, radio program, and I could hear uh, on my end of the, of the phone line him introducing me and getting ready to do uh, the interview, and about the time his uh, uh, he made the uh, the connection to, to ask me to uh, to join him on the call. Uh, the, the phone line went dead, and uh, that was kind of a surprise. So we had a little bit of a scramble with the technicians there, trying to figure out what was going on, and ended up using a cell phone for the the final connection. I, and I know. Uh, uh, some of you uh, who heard the call uh, have mentioned the audio quality was a little bit lower than sometimes it is, but that was because of all the uh, the scrambling around with the cell phones and trying to get reconnected there at the at the last minute when everything fell apart on us. Uh, so that that kind of stuff happens, and um, we appreciate your patience with that. If you joined us for that uh, radio interview, and I'm hopeful here that we have a minimal. Um, amount of disruption and uh, snafus with the, the Mercury retrograde situation with our webinar. Now, it's always fascinating to deal with the, the technology and to try to get things uh, functioning. At any rate, uh, we're very, very glad that you're able to join us here uh, this evening because we've got some very important stuff just ahead uh, astrologically that we can expect to impact the markets. And so we want to talk about uh, the high stress times coming up uh, really within the, the next week here in the markets uh, and uh, the dangers and opportunities that it presents f uh, uh, for us. Uh, what we've got, of course, are some very, very treacherous situations uh, with our trading uh, and uh, with the market uh, fluctuations. We've been dealing with uh, extremes of volatility and, and there are some very intriguing dynamics uh, with regard to that. But always, whenever we see uh, any kind of disruption in the market activity, uh, there is a, a, an opportunity there waiting for us as well. And that's something we want to stay aware of, uh, the opportunities that go with the turbulence that we're uh, experiencing. Uh, right now. So that's really what we're focusing on here uh, together uh, with, with this session. Now, before we get started, I, I think it's important all, uh, occasionally for us to, to, to touch base with some of the, uh, the core concepts that we deal with uh, as astro traders. I know uh, just by looking at some of the, the participants who've joined us this evening, some of you are very seasoned uh, astro traders and have been uh, with me for a while. We've um, uh, and, uh, worked with various uh, workshops or webinars uh, together. Some of you have been uh, private uh, clients and we've done some coaching work with your uh, trading and we certainly make those kinds of services available uh, for those that want uh, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, guidance. Uh, others have uh, 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 gotten the uh, basic stock market astrology home study course and worked with that. So uh, we're, we're not dealing with a, a group of, of, of novices here uh, on the, the the program here today as far as I can tell, but we always have uh, some new names and faces and we like to repeat some of these fundamentals uh, very, very briefly just to give you an idea of what we're working with when we talk about the astro trading uh, advantage. It certainly does give us an advantage uh, as we approach uh, the markets. Uh, we have uh, a distinct set of tools that other traders uh, don't get to use and uh, that gives us uh, some, some real uh, 
uh, edges at times in, in dealing with market situations. Uh, of course, the key concept, uh, the, the basic assumption, I guess, uh, that you could say, uh, is that there is some kind of correlation between what's happening in the heavens, between the planetary dynamics that are going on and the action in the markets as, as well. Uh, and so uh, we have that uh, core assumption. If you don't think there's any correlation there, uh, once you begin to work with this stuff, uh, I think you'll discover that uh, very, very strongly. Uh, this kind of begs the question of cause and effect. We're not saying necessarily uh, that there is a cause of market action uh, by the planetary phenomena, but there is definitely a correlation, and you know, we won't get into the, the fine points of that here this evening, but the, the, the fundamental notion is, of course, that there is some kind of a connection going on here. Uh, now, when we work with this, we are not doing uh, kind of uh, psychic, speculative, woo-woo sort of work uh, with our engagement in the markets. What we're really looking at are forecasts that have been informed with a lot of empirical research. We do a great deal of back testing uh, to see what's going on uh, with uh, the, the phenomena in astrology uh, and, and their correlation with the markets. This is one of the great things about the situation. As long as we have uh, some extended price history, we can go back and look what was going on astrologically uh, and, and uh, see what kinds of correlations are there. So we have uh, some uh, opportunities for very, very rigorous back testing, and we certainly apply that uh, to our work uh, with the markets at all times. So uh, this is another core concept to be aware of. We're, we're basing this uh, work on empirical studies and extensive uh, back testing. And of course, we always combine our astrological perspective, our, our, our planetary studies and our uh, deductions from that work with fundamental analysis and technical analysis as well. We like to find out what's going on fundamentally in terms of an understanding of economic trends and, and the ins and outs of the businesses we might be investing in or the various uh, uh, commodities that we're trading, uh, what's happening uh, to supply and demand, what's happening with production and so forth. These are core fundamental questions uh, that we need to have some perspective on and then we do technical analysis as well. We look at the, the charts of the price history of various uh, stocks and commodities, whatever it is that we're trading, and we gather some information from that graphic presentation of price history. It, it, it gives us a, a condensed form of looking at price over time, and on that basis we can draw certain conclusions as well. So really what we're doing is combining three things. When we talk about astro trading, we're, talking, we're combining the, the pure astrological approach as well as uh, some work with fundamental analysis and core understanding of the market fundamentals and the technical analysis as well. And of course, uh, we always like to caution our students and fellow traders here, uh, fellow astro traders, that good astro trading depends upon a good money management and good trade management. And that means gauging the size of your positions, uh, deciding uh, how much of your portfolio or your, your trading capital can be allocated to certain trades, and then protecting those positions with uh, appropriate use of stop loss orders as, as well along the, the, the way. Uh, so when we look at that then, we are using these planetary dynamics in some very specific ways that give us a remarkable advantage, as, I, as I've uh, just said, uh, because these powerful tools that we use for analyzing the market and for, for timing our trades are all based on uh, cyclic phenomena. Uh, the, the, the planets go through cycles, and we'll talk about some of the cycles and some of the uh, dynamics involving the planets here uh, in, during the next few minutes. But uh, a good simple example, I think, would be the phases of the moon. Uh, every month we, we go from the, the new moon, the dark of the moon, all the way to the full moon, and then back again. So it's a, it's a very clear cyclic phenomenon based on the relationship of position of the sun and the moon as seen from the Earth's perspective. And when we begin to understand uh, the cyclic patterns then of the planets, we begin to get particular insights uh, into the markets. And that's where a lot of the power of the, these ap approaches comes from. Uh, so as we look at that then, uh, we want to keep uh, these things in mind. Now, now what are uh, the important planetary dynamics that we, we like to, 
to work with. Well, we'll mention just a few of them in passing here because, again, I think it's important uh, to gain a little bit of a sense of perspective of what's involved in this kind of approach to the markets. We work, uh, of course, with eclipses a great deal. A couple times a year, uh, we publish uh, special reports on the eclipses and uh, their power for influence on the markets. Uh, we, again, base this work on empirical research, and we try to cover a great deal of material in those uh, special monographs, the special reports that we publish uh, uh, a couple of times a year prior to uh, each major solar eclipse. Well, we look at the, the lunar eclipses as well. Uh, they have an impact on the markets, uh, not quite as strong as the solar eclipses, but they're an important factor. Uh, we also look at the eclipse paths, the uh, the shadow of, of the, the eclipse, the, the, the path where an eclipse, uh, solar eclipse is visible uh, on the surface of the Earth is also an important consideration in our eclipse work. And of course, uh, uh, one of the core concepts that we deal with in dealing with eclipses is that the power of eclipses lasts much longer than the date of the eclipse itself. Uh, the, the eclipse can be activated by other planetary transits and other configurations over quite a period of, of time. And one of the special cases that we look at with eclipse activations is the uh, lunar returns to the eclipse points uh, as well. So we, we look at the position uh, of uh, the sun and moon and, and as they form that eclipse and then look at the times the moon goes back to that point on a monthly basis and use that as a forecasting tool uh, also. Uh, it, it's a very, very powerful tool. We've uh, worked with that now for about 10, 12 years uh, with our eclipse analysis uh, in the markets and continue to find it very, very rewarding in our, our approach. So that's one of the, the planetary dynamics that that we uh, take into consideration. We like to look at the eclipses. We also look at what we might call planetary alignments. Now, uh, these uh, would be the kinds of things that the astrologers would refer to as planetary aspects. Uh, an aspect is simply an angular relationship between a pair of planets. And we look at these uh, aspects or relationships between uh, pairs of planets and also uh, planets taken in groups of threes and other kinds of patterns uh, that emerge. So we, we'd like to use the term alignments because uh, it's a little bit more generic. It covers a little bit uh, a broader spectrum, so to speak. Now, we're concerned uh, primarily with the alignments of the outer planets. Um, uh, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, uh, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, uh, and, and uh, we throw in, in Chiron there as well. Uh, the ones with, with longer orbits, uh, when they go into particular uh, alignments, uh, tend to have a stronger impact. Uh, of course, we look look at the inner planets as well, uh, that they're faster moving, and we get more of these uh, alignments, uh, you know, during a given month from the inner planets than we do from the outer ones, uh, but they can provide triggers for the markets as well. So uh, we work with these planetary alignments uh, from a geocentric perspective, and we also include a heliocentric perspective as well uh, to try to gauge what's going on. And uh, one of the things that makes uh, our specific approach to astro trading a little bit different uh, than some other uh, astrological approaches is that we incorporate the use of the, what we call the trans-Neptunian factors. Uh, there are eight uh, hypothetical planets that have uh, not been uh, observed directly, although we think they're connected with Kuiper belt uh, objects in some way that have been recently uh, discovered and explored by astronomers over the past uh, few years. Uh, but at any rate, these additional factors give us sensitive points uh, in the zodiac and give us specific kinds of planetary timing uh, that we can use in our market uh, analysis and in our work uh, uh, with uh, the markets. Now, when planets change signs of the zodiac, they move from one sign to the next. We call this a planetary ingress. And these are other uh, phenomena that we like to pay attention to, the, the particular dynamics. Whenever a planet moves from one sign to another, uh, it's kind of an arbitrary thing uh, just in terms of spatial uh, uh, alignment. But because of the conventions surrounding uh, astrology and the use 
use of these over time, uh, uh, the, the, the signs of the zodiac have become uh, very important considerations for us to take a look at. So when a planet changes signs, we'll often find that it will trigger uh, activity in the markets, especially when uh, we have what we call the cardinal ingresses, uh, the movement of a planet into one of the cardinal signs of the zodiac. Uh, that would be uh, uh, Aries, Cancer, uh, Libra, or Capricorn uh, moving past the zero degree points of those signs of the zodiac. And that's an area that's been activated very, very strongly uh, since uh, to early 2010. will continue to be activated here for uh, about another year and a half uh, as we move through 2012 um, with what we call the cardinal climax. That's getting a tremendous amount of stress with planetary alignments in that area. Uh, that's another topic <laughs> uh, that goes beyond what we're discussing here today. But uh, suffice it to say that that's one of the phenomena, or one of the planetary dynamics that we, we like to keep an eye on is what's going on with planets uh, changing signs of, of the zodiac. And of course, so we mentioned earlier as an example of cycles, the lunar cycle, that is something we pay attention to on an ongoing basis uh, because it occurs so frequently. It's not always associated with major market moves, but it is uh, an accenting factor that we need to take into consideration. We look, of course, at the new moons and at the full moons each month, and occasionally there will be lunar occultations as well, when the, uh, the physical body of the moon completely blots out a specific planet in the sky, and these are particularly interesting uh, phenomena to observe uh, along the, the, the way as we look at, at uh, various uh, lunar dynamics and lunar cycles. Uh, in addition to that, and our real focus here for our time together today is the planetary stations. These are the times that the planets seem to change direction. Uh, they stop going in one direction, uh, seem to stand still uh, for a short period of time, and then back up and head in the opposite direction. And we refer to this as retrograde motion when the planets seem to move backwards. It's uh, actually sort of an optical illusion uh, because we're seeing it from the Earth's perspective, and we have unequal rates of speed of, of our orbits around the sun, so there are various times when the planets play catch up a little bit, and uh, we, we get this effect, as seen from our earthbound perspective, uh, that the planets are going retrograde through the sky. Uh, nevertheless, even though this is something that's uh, really uh, kind of illusory, uh, it is something that has a consistently large impact, and we watch these times when planets are in retrograde motion, but especially the times when there's a shift from direct motion to retrograde motion or from retrograde motion back to direct motion. We call these the planetary stations. The retrograde station is when the planet's been moving forward and starts to go backwards. The direct station is when it has been going backwards and then resumes forward motion uh, at that point. So we mark these points and they have become particularly significant uh, uh, for us. And as I say, that's one of the main points of focus that we're concerned with in our time together. Now whenever we We've mentioned all these different kinds of multiple planet, uh, uh, planetary dynamics. Whenever we have uh, m multiple events occurring near the same time frame, uh, then uh, we get an amplification of the, the overall effect. And that's one of the things we look for as astro traders. What are those time frames uh, when we get an amplification or the potential for an amplification because there are different things happening uh, on the, you know, within a, a kind concentrated time frame, sometimes on the same day, sometimes over a period of a, of a few days. We, we like to, to keep track of that. And that's exactly what's going on right now. It's what's going to be happening here between the 26th of August and the 31st of August uh, coming up here starting uh, on uh, at the end of this week. Uh, we'll be seeing uh, this, this stuff uh, uh, lining up. So uh, when we, we have this going on, we're, we're talking in this case primarily about planetary stations, and that's really our point of focus here, uh, and we get a lot of them during the course of, of each year. Uh, Virtually all those outer planets that I mentioned, and, in, and the trans-Neptunians as well, will go into retrograde motion once a year and then return to direct motion once a year, some months later. Uh, and so we, we have these stations occurring with some frequency. We also, of course, famously have uh, the Mercury retrograde periods. Uh, this is probably one of the best known uh, uh, phenomena associated with planetary stations that we get in astrology. And Mercury goes into retrograde motion three times each year. 
here. Uh, we were mentioning this at, at the outset here, talking about Mercury being retrograde right now and some of the challenges that we have because of that uh, in, in our, our work. Um, but uh, w Mercury will go retrograde about three times each year for about three weeks each time, so we get a good number of Mercury stations alone every year. Now, what's interesting and what's noteworthy here is when we get uh, stations by different planets occurring uh, within a, a concentrated time frame. So occasionally we'll get two pl different planets making a station, sometimes two retrograde stations or two direct stations or one retrograde, one direct, whatever it may be, uh, within a day or two of each other. And uh, there, those are the times that we can pinpoint because there's usually a much stronger impact on the markets when that uh, occurs. Now sometimes, of course, the, the two will happen on the same day that's especially strong but even within a couple of days of each other we get some amplification and sometimes we even get three planets working together we get three planetary stations within a couple of days and that is really something that we tend to flag and pay a lot of attention to uh, because it's unusual uh, that we will have three operating all at once like that and uh, we want to keep an eye on what's going on with the markets uh, during that that kind of uh, time frame whenever that occurs. Uh, now uh, there's something even more unusual than that uh, just ahead of us here and that's why we wanted to have this webinar uh, because I wanted to, to make sure you are up to speed with what's coming down here uh, over this next week uh, and it's a, it's a, a, a very unusual situation uh, taking place between August 26th and 31st. Uh, what's going on here uh, is that we have not to uh, not three but four planetary stations occurring within a relatively short uh, time frame within this uh, six day period uh, here from the 26th to the 31st uh, of August. Uh, and uh, we're calling this a planetary station super cluster. Uh, now this is a term that you probably haven't heard before because we just made it up. <laughs> but uh, the, the fact is we need to refer to something of this kind of, of scope and impact I think uh, uh, with some kind of a label attached to give us uh, uh, some attention uh, to it or, or so that it commands our attention because that's exactly what it deserves. We've got something uh, quite extraordinary going on here, and so uh, what we're looking at is four uh, different planets. In this case, uh, the conventional planets and trans-Neptunian bodies as well, the trans-Neptunian factors we take into account uh, when we do this kind of work. Um, but with four of them occurring within a limited time frame, we have a remarkable set uh, of, of circumstances. In fact, uh, we have these, uh, we have uh, four stations just within six days, uh, and uh, this kind of thing, uh, I did a little bit of, of, of research on this, I've just been able to spot five previous examples with within, uh, within a six-day period or less uh, over the last 25 years when this has happened. Uh, there are a number of occurrences, of course, when we have two planetary stations within a day or two of each other. Uh, th that's not all that rare. Uh, we have a, a, a reasonable number of when we get three, but having four all together like this is indeed a very, very rare uh, phenomenon. And in fact, during uh, the, the last uh, a quarter of a century, we can go back to July of 1986, uh, then in September of 1989, in February of 1990, uh, uh, February of 1993. The most recent one was in August of 1998, and then, of course, we've noted here uh, the current one that we're looking at from August uh, 26th to 31st. Now, it's fascinating to go back and to study each of these phenomena and look at various markets with regard uh, to what happened there. Uh, I've been doing a good bit of this research uh, recently. Uh, we won't uh, 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 burden you with all the details here, uh, but let's take a look at a good e example of this. This was uh, what happened uh, back uh, in, uh, 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 the, uh, in September of 1989, and this is a chart 
chart for the S&P 500. Uh, as you can see, we've drawn a, a red uh, a trend line here uh, showing the upward trend that the S&P was getting. Over on the right-hand side of the chart, you'll notice here uh, that we have a couple of colored bars coming together. What was going on then? Well, on the 9th of September, we had uh, the trans-Neptunian Hades going into retrograde motion, a retrograde station. Uh, we had Uranus making a direct station on that date. And then two days later, on the 11th of September, Saturn went direct and Mercury went retrograde. So we had uh, four uh, planetary stations within really a three-day period, the, the, the 9th, 10th, 11th uh, of, of September. A very, very concentrated uh, dynamic there. And what happened was that the S&P uh, definitively broke down below uh, that uh, uh, trend line uh, as a result of this. And it trended uh, uh, downward after that. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, that trend line went away uh, after that. It, it had been briefly violated once before, uh, but uh, this marked a significant um, a breakdown of that trend line. And so uh, it, it g gave us something to pay attention to in the markets. Now, I want to um, add at this point that this does not happen consistently. We don't always get a break of a trend line. Uh, and of course, sometimes the market is trending uh, downward instead of trending up, as we found in, in 1989. Uh, but we will uh, oftentimes get a, a breakdown uh, from a particular market trend. Uh, sometimes it will be a breakout from congestion. Uh, uh, and at times, it will be a precursor with uh, you know, a little bit of a lag time, sometimes four or five trading days after a phenomenon like this, for the markets to kind of absorb the full impact of the phenomenon, and then we get a major trend reversal coming after it. Uh, so we want to, to caution you that uh, looking at one or two examples like this does not necessarily give us a total prediction of what to expect coming up. Uh, in fact, this is probably a good point to uh, repeat the, the, the disclaimer and the caveat. We uh, like to put that at the beginning and the end of each of our presentations when we remember to do so. And I think we did get that card up uh, at the beginning with a disclaimer on it. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, legally, uh, we're required to, to tell you that uh, uh, past performance is no guarantee of future results. And in fact, uh, you should not do uh, anything whatsoever without consulting your attorney uh, first. Uh, don't even bother getting out of bed in the morning, uh, whatever. <laughs> but uh, uh, you just uh, be, be sure that you're aware of the uh, of the disclaimers involved that we cannot guarantee uh, that these uh, tools will work again just because they worked in the past. Even so, we like to take a look at what went on in the past and get some uh, conclusions from that and understand uh, what's going on with the overall uh, dynamic that we're presenting so that we can uh, give you an idea of the kinds of things that we're looking for in the future. So I think this is a good example. Uh, we'll, I think, just look at that one uh, for right now rather than uh, spending all of our time digging into the history of it, uh, but it shows you what can happen. So let's talk about what's actually coming up here with the Planetary Station Supercluster uh, of August uh, 2011, uh, between the 26th and the, and the, the 31st. Uh, we have those four planetary stations uh, th that uh, we use as the requirement for this, and there's an, an added factor here as well. Uh, on the, the 26th of August, which is uh, this uh, Friday we'll have the Mercury Direct Station, and then the next day on Saturday the 27th we'll have uh, the a, a retrograde station with by the trans-Neptunian factor Admetos. Then on Sunday the the 28th uh, we have a new moon. When the market opens on the 30th of uh, August we'll have uh, Jupiter going retrograde, and then the following day on. Uh, uh, the, the 31st uh, there of, of August. I'm sorry, the Jupiter retrograde station will not be Monday. That'll be Tuesday. We, we skimmed Monday there. Uh, the 31st of August will be a Wednesday. And uh, we'll have uh, Cupido, another trans-Neptunian, uh, going into direct motion on, on that day. So these are the phenomena that we're, we're looking at uh, with this whole uh, cluster. Now, the important thing to note here, of course, is that right in the middle of it, we have a new moon. And the new moon is an amplifying factor. We don't always find that when we get one of uh, these uh, planetary station superclusters 
But when we do, uh, it affords us an extra level of amplification, uh, an extra focal point for the whole process. And that's why it's of particular interest to, to us because we have that acting as kind of a, a magnifying lens uh, directing the, the energy through this whole uh, uh, time frame. So uh, it's important to understand here as well that different markets will respond to these kinds of geocosmic influences in, in different ways. And as we talk about uh, this, we'll be using examples based on back testing from the S&P, but we want to uh, maintain a much broader perspective than that. Uh, we like to look at a variety of markets and get as broad an understanding of what's going on as we possibly can so that we can identify opportunities. Uh, now, in, in other words, uh, if, if you're trading a particular market, if you're trading uh, uh, Forex pairs or you're trying to uh, in invest in, in options for Walmart or whatever it may be, you need to do the back testing with a particular market that you're looking at as well and we encourage you uh, uh, to do so. Uh, of course, the broader base of the research that you have and an understanding of this kind of thing, then the better prepared you are uh, to deal with the situations that can come up and uh, take advantage of the trading opportunities that present themselves. Uh, along the way. Uh, but having said that, uh, even though different markets respond in different ways, it's helpful uh, to review the specific astrological dynamics that are coming up just ahead of us. Uh, the, uh, these are the kinds of things that can move the markets uh, and as I said earlier, what can happen is we can create some very, very dangerous situations in the markets and then at the same time we get some once in a lifetime opportunities for creating wealth. A lot of this this time comes through fairly short term trading opportunities. This is not like socking money into an investment that you uh, leave alone and, and don't come back to for 20 years and then you've made money. Uh, these, there are some opportunities here. Uh, for some pretty strong applied leverage if you put uh, it in the right uh, uh, position in the right uh, direction. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. We've got a few astrological charts uh, to look at just for these events that we're describing and I think it's useful to take a, 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 a glimpse at them just so we get a sense of how things set up here. Here's the, the Mercury direct station and of course we have uh, 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 Mercury here circled in, in, in red. Uh, at the time it goes direct it's 18 degrees 41 minutes of, of Leo uh, and uh, there are some interesting patterns uh, in these uh, charts at the time of these various uh, phenomena. Uh, one of the things that you'll note here uh, is kind of a, 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 a blue uh, equilateral triangle uh, in, in this chart and this is a lineup between the uh, Sun-Venus uh, conjunction uh, over on the upper right hand side, Pluto at 4 degrees of Capricorn on the left and then down at the bottom uh, Jupiter at 10 degrees of, of Taurus and they line up loosely in what we call a grand trine pattern uh, and so uh, this is a, uh, an interesting dynamic in forming the, the market action at the time. But what we're really interested in is the impact of Mercury making a direct station here. It is moved through uh, Leo. It was actually began its journey in retrograde motion in the early degrees of Virgo. It's backed up uh, 12 degrees into Leo to back to the 18 degree uh, mark of, of, of Leo uh, and that's when it resumes it, its, its forward motion. Now when we have a Mercury direct station like this there are particular things we need to keep in mind. First of all as I mentioned earlier we've had Mercury retrograde for a couple weeks already and this will finish this retrograde retrograde phase that began on uh, August the 2nd when Mercury had its, its retrograde station. Now even though Mercury returns to direct motion here on the 26th, the di uh, direct station like this can oftentimes be an extraordinarily stressful time. Uh, it's as if all of the uh, uh, communications, energy and transportation uh, uh, mishaps and whatnot that have uh, kind of nagged at us for the last three weeks kind of come to a head at the time of the direct station and more often than not I found that, that things can be extremely stressful around this time so that's one of the, the keynotes that uh, gives us a reason to, to uh, pay attention to this whole uh, uh, phenomenon uh, in, in the first place and when we have uh, uh, this super cluster of uh, planetary stations. Uh, now Mercury has turned direct 
we've gotten past the retrograde phase in which uh, we can expect there to be problems with connecting with other people, when we can expect the problems with communications and so forth, impacting the markets with a counter trend uh, kind of dynamic. But Mercury is still in the shadow phase of the retrograde cycle. In other words, it's going direct, it's moving forward, but it's not yet gotten back to the point where it started moving backwards. And it won't do so until the 10th of September in this case. So that's something we want to keep in mind as well. We, we uh, are getting this residual effect with Mercury. The important factor here, though, is the direct station itself. And this can be a factor in and of itself that skews market activity in some fairly uh, dramatic uh, ways. If we're just looking at it by itself. Uh, we've, we've seen the markets turn on a Mercury direct station before in the past, uh, so it would not be unusual to see it if that were the only thing we're looking at here. But of course, we're looking at much more than that, and we do have, in fact, the planetary station supercluster uh, that we're concerned with here. Next, we have the Admetos retrograde station. That occurs on the 27th of August, uh, as we mentioned earlier. And Admetos is one of the trans-Neptunian factors. Uh, we've circled Admetos here at 27 degrees of Taurus uh, as it pops into uh, uh, this chart. Note that we still have this uh, grand trine pattern. It's just a day uh, later. Uh, and we, we have, uh, in this case, because of the difference in time of day, uh, Jupiter is up at the uh, uh, the right there, just past the circle around uh, uh, Admetos. And then uh, over on the left-hand side, we have the Sun-Venus uh, 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 conjunction at 3 and 6 degrees of Virgo. And then down at the bottom of the wheel, of course, uh, uh, Pluto at 4, almost 5 degrees of, of Capricorn. And so we have this lineup with the Grand Trine and Earth signs on the chart. And Admetos uh, is going back into, uh, or, in, or, or starting its retrograde motion after being uh, in direct motion for a, a number of months. Now, what happens with an Admetos retrograde station? Now, we have uh, the, you know, the literature available on the trans-Neptunian planets and their uh, effects and how to use these factors uh, in our forecasting work, especially in areas like mundane astrology where we're concerned with markets and with uh, geopolitics. We like to use these factors because they can be very, very informative for us. Um, but uh, the work on the impact of retrograde and direct stations of the trans-Neptunians is stuff that we have to do empirically. We have to do the research and do the back testing uh, simply because it's not in the literature. And that's a, a whole area of financial astrology and astro trading that we have uh, been e exploring here. So when we have an Admetos retrograde station, essentially what we're looking at are certain key indicators here. Uh, we It's a associated with big blockages, with big obstacles, big challenges that get in the way of processes. So things can break down or hit an impasse in, uh, on a very, very large scale as a result of this. Now, think in terms of a continuing market trend. Lately, we have seen a pretty strong downtrend in the markets, uh, and the, the bearishness has been persistent. It may be that that is what hits an impasse, and we could get a trend reversal out of this. We're not sure. Uh, at a fundamental level, we're dealing with shortages, with limitations, again, with blockages in the flow of goods and services. And so when we start talking about situations in which uh, there's not enough to go around, uh, it's, it's more associated with the stuff than the money, although it can apply to the money as, as well. Uh, that's the kind of situation we'll encounter with an Admetos retrograde station. And th there is that strong emphasis on raw materials. Do we have enough stuff? Do we have um, enough coal to fire the, uh, 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 the, 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 the furnace? Do we have uh, enough oil to, uh, uh, to handle the, the, the job at hand? Whatever the, the commodity is, we pay particular attention here uh, to those basic commodities that processes rely on when we're dealing with an Admetos retrograde station. Tremendous amount of focus on that area. So we'll want to be paying attention to this in the markets uh, as a whole as we, we move uh, forward with this time frame. Now the strongest impact I think will be uh, around the August 26th date simply because that's a trading day. The Admetos station comes uh, on the Saturday. We 
we could see a bleed over the effect into the following Monday as well. Uh, so we're less concerned with pinpointing a date here as we are looking at this entire time frame between the 26th of August and the 31st of August. And Admetos, I think, picks up the energy more at the front end of that process. Now we go over to the Jupiter retrograde station, which will happen on Tuesday of the 30th of um of August, and in this case, Jupiter is near the midheaven on the chart, midheaven at, at uh, 16 degrees, uh, Jupiter at 10 degrees of Taurus, and uh, of course, we set all of our charts here for New York City. That's our convention as we deal with our financial astrology uh, horoscopes, uh, and you'll find that in our, our newsletter at uh, financialcyclesweekly.com, also in our eclipse reports. Uh, we refer back to the charts as set for New York uh, because uh, that kind of provides the uh, the axis that we deal with from the financial uh, perspective uh, whether it's uh, egalitarian or not uh, you know that that uh, ends up being a de facto way we, we, we look at things so in this particular case then uh, this occurs uh, at uh, about uh, what 18 19 minutes after five uh, in the morning, and we have over on the left-hand side, we're looking at that grand trine pattern again. Jupiter at the top going down to the left. That Sun-Venus conjunction is below the uh, eastern horizon on the left side of the charts prior to sunrise. And, of course, Pluto down uh, in the lower right-hand uh, corner there at the, the bottom of the chart. Now, Jupiter is the planet of expansion, and when it's in direct motion, we typically have uh, advancing financial times, and, and uh, things are, are getting better uh, financially. Uh, now, you know, there's some argument about that uh, situation over the past few months. Jupiter has been direct. Uh, depends on what side of the, the, the street you're, you're looking at and, and where, what uh, kinds of measures you use of financial progress. Uh, there are signs that uh, there's some recovery coming out of the recessionary time. Uh, but if you're talking with somebody who's been unemployed for a year and a half or has just gotten laid off from a job, uh, then uh, they're likely to give you an entire entirely different kind of story about uh, the impact of, of Jupiter on, on financial expansion. At any rate, when it goes retrograde, we typically see a little bit of financial contraction, whether that's a, a, a relative thing uh, or what it's relative to, uh, we'll often uh, see that uh, uh, in, in, in the works. Now, with the retrograde station this time around, one of the things that we can expect is that we'll get an emphasis on legal issues coming to uh, the forefront at, at, at this particular time. This can be one company suing another, a government uh, antitrust action or some other kind of, of, of regulatory action that impacts things, or, or there, there may be a revelation about uh, uh, malfeasance of some sort uh, and, and somebody engaging in criminal activity uh, with, uh, under the guise of doing something else. So we're going to pay attention to that. Oftentimes when that comes to the forefront, uh, we get a perspective uh, that can impact the markets in, in certain ways. A good recent example of this uh, was the whole flap around News Corp uh, and the, uh, uh, the you know, tapping into the, the, the cell phones and you know, was this kind of a, a, a small issue with a particular newspaper in England or did it impact the entire corporation? The more of that story that came out, the bigger the potential impact that it had uh, on uh, News Corp as, as uh, 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 an entity and its, its role in the markets. And, of course, Murdoch's uh, role as a, a CEO began to be uh, questioned a bit as the, as the chairman there. And then uh, uh, you know, other uh, media companies uh, were called into question in various ways as well and uh, so there was kind of a ripple effect that had kind of a tangential effect on the markets but it's something worth paying attention to. So when we see these kinds of, of, of issues coming to the forefront we want to pay attention whether it's a Bernie Madoff or Rupert Murdoch or wh whatever it is uh, that comes into, into play here. Uh, there, there's big opportunities with any Jupiter station for financial expansion. I mentioned the expansion contract business a moment ago, and with Jupiter going retrograde, we'd expect some in, in, in expansion to become a little bit more restricted, uh, but uh, generally speaking, this big emphasis on Jupiter can be the underpinning of an expansion as well, and so it can create a little bit broader bullish sentiment in the markets, uh, whether or not that's highly justified by the, the, the technical pictures. Uh, you know, uh, there is, tends to be an influx of some optimism here, uh, because it encourages 
encourage is looking at the longer range perspective and a little bit bigger thinking. Uh, people are willing to be a little bit more forgiving uh, with uh, shortcomings in earnings reports and things of that sort than might otherwise be a major negative skew to the, the markets. So especially if we look at the markets coming out of uh, this uh, short term counter trend with a movement to the downside during the Mercury retrograde, uh, Jupiter uh, going retrograde and making a station here can actually be a positive uh, influence. Now the Cupido direct station involves a second uh, a trans-Neptunian factor. Uh, we'll circle that here and again near the top of the wheel. Uh, and it is at 17 degrees of Sagittarius uh, and, and this uh, chart. So it's in a fire sign. With all these configurations we've got a strong emphasis on fire signs and on earth signs. The grand trine in earth signs that we've pointed out certainly comes into play again and again. In this case we've put uh, that Pluto in that grand trine pattern up near the midheaven. Uh, lower right hand side there we see uh, at one corner of that triangle um, the Venus and, and Sun. Uh, the Venus pulling away from the Sun at this point uh, and then Jupiter at, at 10 degrees on the lower left uh, hand, 10 degrees of Taurus there. So we get uh, this emphasis on the Earth signs with the grand trine. In this case Cupido is in Sagittarius with the fire sign adding a great deal more energy to the picture uh, and we have uh, seen uh, some of that action going on with the, the Mercury station also in a fire sign as well. So we've got kind of an even division here between uh, Earth and fire going on in, the, in uh, the charts and so there's an attempt going on to be very grounded, very analytical and at the same time it's hard to contain enthusiasm for those who are feeling uh, bullish in this kind of environment. What we want to do is make sure you bring enough caution uh, to the overall picture uh, as we, we look at these circumstances. Now with Cupido and its direct station there's a big emphasis on social issues in general and cultural dynamics uh, in the sense of uh, what group do we belong to? Uh, whoever we is <laughs> that was is doing the talking here. Um, what we, we can refer to it as a question of allegiance to the tribe. Uh, what tribe are you a part of? Uh, the tribe may be uh, the Republican Party. The tribe may be uh, the community of, of astro traders. Uh, the, the tribe may be a, a religious group or it can be a national allegiance. Uh, it depends on how you define the group that you adhere to. And the emphasis here with Cupido is on honor that whole tradition and maintaining kind of a, a, a cultural purity within that tradition, whatever it may be. Uh, this can lead to some fairly uh, bigoted and closed-minded thinking on one extreme, but it can also uh, create some uh, wonderful opportunities for creativity uh, at, at the same time. So we do have this emphasis on aesthetic concerns and artistic activity somewhat uh, through the Capito uh, involvement as well. And we can expect these two points of view to come into a little bit of a clash at this time with the uh, Cupido uh, 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 station happening, with the, the, the direct station. That is to say, on the one hand, those who want to define clear lines of demarcation between various groups, and on the other hand, those who want to pursue uh, more artistic expansion and activity uh, that, that uh, enhances a cultural perspective uh, can boil down to some big debates about a uh, funding efforts for nonprofits. That's kind of where the rubber meets the road uh, in, in that area. Uh, so in this case then, in terms of market activity, we're going to pay particular attention to the collectibles markets and what happens there because it can be uh, a big uh, area of emphasis and also what we could call the ancillary uh, enterprises associated with collectibles. Um, the auction houses, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the various activities that, uh, that support uh, uh, this kind of, of, of endeavor. Uh, eBay comes to mind as a company we may want to pay particular attention to uh, during this uh, time frame. Uh, they built a, a very strong business, uh, not just on culture and, and collectibles in terms of, 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 of uh, uh, dealing only with collectors, but there's certainly a venue that profits uh, uh, from that. So uh, it gives us some interesting uh, possibilities there as well with the Capito direct station. Then as we mentioned earlier 
here we have kind of the kicker to the whole mix, which is the new moon. Uh, that occurs on the 28th of, of August, uh, shortly uh, uh, before midnight, li a little after 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern time uh, on, on the 28th. And, of course, uh, we find the, the new moon here at the bottom of, of, of the chart wheel um, uh, and... Um, uh, have that, uh, let's see here, I think we got it circled, there we go, um, at uh, uh, five degrees and change of Virgo, so it's that emphasis on the Earth uh, dynamic again. And of course we're picking up very strongly there uh, that uh, grand trine pattern with that new moon being now conjoining the sun at uh, one of the uh, apexes of that, that uh, uh, triangular pattern uh, in the chart. And so we get through this then a strong amplification of the energies that we're experiencing during this planetary station uh, supercluster. Uh, and in fact, uh, with the new moon, uh, what we have is a very, very strong focal point for new market directions. This occurs at every new moon. We're always looking at this point to say what comes next and what direction will the markets go in. Usually the markets respond f a little, uh, you know, with a, with a, with a bullish bias uh, to the new moon. Uh, not extremely so, but it's, a, it's certainly a bias in, in that uh, uh, direction. Uh, in this case, uh, the new moon can amplify the intensity of trends and of trend changes, and that's exactly what we're anticipating here because of its uh, role playing in, into uh, this um, uh, uh, planetary station supercluster that we have going on. Uh, is there a possibility of trend reversals at this point? You betcha. Uh, is that a certainty? We don't know. I mean, again, uh, the caveats apply. Uh, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Uh, see your lawyer first, but uh, pay attention to this because the potential is certainly there, and the new moon amplifies it and intensifies the power of the Mercury station, the Admito station in particular, so those issues relative to communications and to uh, raw materials and so forth that we've already mentioned come into play very, very strongly uh, at this time. Now, again, I think we'll see uh, the biggest impact of the new moon around the 26th of August, uh, the close of this trading week that we just uh, have entered here, uh, uh, although we could see it carrying over into the beginning of the following week uh, as well. Now, as we look at all of these dynamics together, I want you to understand that, again, we're not trying to pinpoint on a day-to-day -day basis as much as we're saying, hey, pay attention to this whole time frame. And as we move into the end of this trading week on, on uh, Friday the 26th, we can expect to see some of these impacts to start to play out in market activity. Uh, even though the last planetary station that we're looking at is on the 31st, we could see some of this energy carry over into the 1st of September as, as well uh, as things move ahead. So the question then is what can we expect to happen uh, as a result of all these phenomena? We've mentioned a few factors along the way, but here are some things that, that uh, I think we'll be able to uh, see unfold here uh, within the next trading week. Uh, first of all, we can look for a big increase in market volatility. Obviously this makes a big difference to you if you're trading options, and if you're looking at the stability of markets in general, this can be a factor because it can drive emotional extremes. And it's something we need to take into account uh, as astro traders. Uh, we, we're seeing a very, very strong reaction when we look at the VIX and some other uh, charts having to do with, with market uh, volatility as, as we examine all this. Uh, we'll get lots of stress on key commodities during this time frame as well. We've already mentioned this factor, a lot of it due to the Admitos dynamic. Uh, and its planetary station, but in general, we want to watch commodities, prices, and trends, look for situations that imply shortages and fluctuations in price on that basis. There'll be more pressure on currencies as well. Uh, of course, we've seen a great deal of uh, pressure on the currencies uh, globally here, uh, especially on the dollar and the euro. Uh, there's uh, some continuing impact there. In other words, things are not likely to let up uh, now, the kinds 
kinds of additional intensity uh, remains to be seen, and what will be impacted uh, will will leave to the currency traders uh, uh, to to profit from. Uh, again, we mentioned the potential for legal actions. We expect to see news of legal actions of one sort or another, uh, either accusations of criminal activity, of malfeasance of some sort, uh, potential uh, regulatory um, questions coming in, or you know one company taking action against uh, another, and and th that kind of dynamic, then we may also see some bleed through into the realm of mergers and acquisitions. Uh, a surprising situation in which there may be an attempt at a hostile takeover or uh, a deal that we thought was a done deal that all of a sudden falls through uh, because of some unanticipated legal ramifications. Keep an ear to the ground in this area because it can certainly make a difference in the trading uh, in, uh, involvement. And then uh, along the way, I, what I'm suspecting is that we're going to see uh, some more attention being paid to the Asian markets. You know, we've had a tremendous amount of emphasis uh, recently uh, on the dollar and the U.S. debt crisis and on the Eurozone uh, debt crisis and the problem of sovereign debt. And, um, and along the way, you know, we have pretty much not paid too much attention to Asia since the tsunami and earthquake and nuclear meltdown in uh, Japan earlier this year. Uh, but it's time for some more news in that area, and we want to pay particular attention uh, to some of these parts of the world uh, that we've not been focusing on recently, and I think one of them we need to pay particular attention to during this time frame will be uh, Asia and, and the markets uh, there. And along the way, of course, uh, all throughout this, what we're really talking about is that we have some extraordinary opportunities for profitable trading as we approach this, this time frame. So the real question is, how do we take uh, ad advantage of that? And uh, here's the, the, the question for each of us as individual traders, because you know, as I work with traders on a daily basis, as I do my own trading, one thing comes back to me again and again and again, which is the fact that we each have our different markets that we like to trade, our different biases and predilections, our different levels of risk tolerance, differing amounts of capital that we have to work with, differing levels of experience. And so there are many, many opportunities that are here um, uh, for you. But in order to determine what's best for you, what I'm going to recommend is that you take a broad-based approach, at least initially, to look at the overall picture, because this is an extraordinary pressure point that we're reaching here. This is uh, an extraordinary occurrence with uh, this planetary station uh, 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 con configuration uh, that we have uh, coming up uh, here uh, later this month. Uh, and, and, you know, w in order to do this, there are a number of steps that we need to take, and I think a methodical approach is probably the best one. Spend some time looking over the major market indices, seeing what's going on there, get your sense of where the trends are going, whether you're using uh, straight technical analysis, whether you're looking at Elliott waves, whether you're using planetary price lines, get a feel for what's going on, and begin to gauge what kind of signals you'll be looking at that would indicate a trend reversal for you. We have the time frame of established when there's a potential for that, how are you going to get the confirmation from your personal trading uh, remains the question. Review the key markets around the world as well, even if you're not personally trading them because there's always this ripple effect. And as we look at uh, what's going on in Tokyo or Mumbai, you know that may not be what we're trading personally ourselves today, but uh, when there's a huge move there or a, a, some kind of dislocation in one of those markets, we can expect a ripple effect uh, in the markets that we may be uh, more personally in involved with. So we want to be aware of that as well. And as we've already mentioned, look at the core commodities. See what's going on during this time frame. Pay attention uh, to all of that. So take that into account. Especially look at the precious metals. We continue to see astronomical prices uh, of, you know, for gold and we, we are, you know, are always amazed when it goes even higher and then higher still. And you know, uh, rather than speculating on where the potential top may be, we want to look for the potential for short-term trend reversals here. See what's going on with that 
because that can set up profitable moves for us and it can also impact other areas as well, especially uh, the currencies, of, 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 of course. And we'll take a particular look at those companies that are industry leaders, the ones that are bellwethers in various sectors. Uh, you know, we uh, have eight or nine thousand different stocks that we can trade, uh, trying to analyze all of them and getting the impact of, of something like this is a, a, a pretty big chore. But if we just pick out some of the, the ones that are, are, are uh, indicators for uh, uh, sector movements, then we can get some pretty good mileage out of that. So these are the areas that we want to look at. In every single case, as you look at this, there's a process that you need to work with here. Backtest for the specific impact of each one of these four uh, planetary stations that we're, we're dealing with here. Uh, and, and make sure uh, that it's not just the station in general, but specifically the retrograde or direct station, as the case may be. In other words, we, uh, Mercury retrograde station will have a remarkably different kind of effect on the markets than a Mercury direct station will. So we want to take a look at the direct station and its impact specifically uh, and uh, with the other three uh, as well. And also, of course, look at the new moon uh, from the perspective of the particular market that you're interested in, in, in trading. And then what we want to do is weight those results. In other words, we want to look at the aggregate of all of them and say, now, does this add up to a positive or a negative situation? Do we have a higher likelihood or, or a smaller likelihood of a trend change and so forth, depending on the uh, the market that I'm, I'm looking at. So this is the kind of analysis. It's fairly uh, intense, fairly time consuming uh, to, to work with. And that's exactly what I've been doing here over the past several weeks as I've been looking at the markets and looking at uh, this upcoming uh, planetary uh, station super cluster that we have just ahead of us. Now, as I've been doing this work, well, what I have, have, have done here is a great deal of in-depth research uh, and a lot of analysis and uh, an excruciating amount of backtesting. It's just taken uh, a huge number of hours to go back and backtest uh, all of these different stations to get an overall picture of what's going on with the various uh, markets. And so I've done a, a very thorough review of, of what I picked out as, as the top 14 uh, market indices, which kind of gives me an index of what's going on uh, on five different continents with the market action there. So we can get a feel for what's happening in various parts of the world and how we might see a ripple effect extend or how one area of the globe may react uh, uh, in a contrary way to actions that we see in other parts of, of the globe. And then I've done a lot of, of uh, uh, back testing for the impact of these planetary stations on a variety of commodities, looked at all the, the main precious metals uh, and and uh, the currencies as well uh, in, the, in the work that I've, I've put together here and uh, gone into a great deal of depth uh, looking at what happens with volatility. It's, uh, it's been occurring to me uh, more and more how important it is to understand the amount of volatility we have in the markets and what drives that astrologically. So that's one of the core concerns that we've addressed and it's uh, amazing to me how big an impact these planetary stations can have uh, on just the question of, of market volatility. That's something that w really uh, deserves even more uh, study and, and research. And of course, along the way, I've looked at some of the uh the key companies uh, uh, that, that drive market trends. Uh, there are a few more that I'll be taking a look at between now uh, and uh, 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 Friday, but uh, essentially I've put together a pretty good survey, so I, I think I've got a, a, a handle on uh, the most important areas that we, we need to look at. And, you know, there's been a lot of other uh, spade work that I've, I've done as well along along the way. And and what I have, have uh, done with this is put all this together uh, into a research report. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm constantly doing research and trying to figure out what's going on in the markets, and I like to be able to share that uh, as well with other astro traders. And I recognize the fact uh, that uh, many of you uh, trade part-time or you know, do not have uh, uh, endless amount of hours to devote to research on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So when we are able to do this kind of intense work, I like to create uh, something that I can pass on to you uh, to be helpful to you uh, in your uh, trading efforts as well. So we have a, a new uh, research report, a new monograph on the Planetary Station Supercluster. 
uh, stress point uh, in the markets, and uh, that is uh, just uh, published uh, as of today, and so it's a, it's available now, uh, and you can uh, get connected with this online at http uh, colon double slash bit dot ly slash 2011 stress and stress here is all lowercase so uh, 2011 stress uh, will get you to the uh, site there with the uh, uh, Harmonic Research Associates uh, order form uh, for that and uh, because uh, you've participated in the, the webinar here uh, we have uh, a, a special discount on this as well you can get 20% off the, uh, the the regular publication price uh, if you uh, uh, get it within the next 48 hours. So this is good through uh, the end of the day on Wednesday, the the, the 24th. Here, uh, we've arranged to, to have that discount in place, uh, specifically for those of you who've taken the time to share the last uh, hour with me. And I do appreciate your your being uh, uh, with me. And of course, uh, with this, uh, you know what we have is that uh, uh, deadline of, of Wednesday, the 24th, to get your your 20% discount uh, on that. And it's an instant download by the way this is a PDF file uh, the, as soon as you make the payment online you can download it so there's no waiting in, around for the mail or whatnot and we've added uh, some bonuses here as well uh, because my biggest concern is that you have in hand as much information as you need to be able to do uh, the kind of research that applies to your specific trading so we have several uh, documents here that apply to trading situations uh, that we've uh, uh, produced earlier this year and uh, some of the, the information is still quite valuable and we want to be able to review this if you don't have these documents all over uh, already I, I suspect you'll find them extremely useful uh, to use in conjunction with uh, this new report first we have the summer crash of 2011 the 12 special situation stocks for uh, profitable planetary trading uh, which regularly sells for $47 uh, and uh, that will be uh, one of the bonuses you'll get uh, with this. In addition to that, you'll get a copy of the solar eclipse of January 2011, uh, its impact on the markets. Uh, that was a $107 uh, monograph that we published back in January, uh, and it described the impact of the eclipse path that has, you know, kind of awakened the uh, Arab Spring. Uh, then uh, third, we have uh, the uh, second uh, eclipse report that we published this year, which is uh, the solar eclipses of June and July 2011, their impact on the markets. Again, $107 value there and we're still working with the lunar returns and the transits to uh, those eclipse activation points uh, with that report. And then finally, uh, we have a copy of the Astro Trading Opportunities in August 2011. Uh, this is a webinar that we recorded with our Gold Plus Elite members at FinancialCyclesWeekly.com. Uh, I think it was the 2nd or 3rd of August, right about the time Mercury went retrograde, and we reviewed uh, in a little bit more detail some of the things that we've talked about here today. Uh, so this is good background information. Uh, it was available as the live webinar at uh, $297, and you have the recording there. Again, it's a downloadable file, in this case, uh, an MP4 file you can play on your computer or uh, download to another uh, player. So uh, that's uh, what we have available here. Again, the, the deadline is Wednesday, the 24th of August. If you'd like to take advantage of this, uh, wanted to make sure that you were a, a aware of its availability, simply because uh, it will save you a lot of time uh, with the uh, research. Uh, so we've got uh, $558 worth of bonuses with these additional material uh, that, uh, that you'll be getting along with this uh, if you choose to order this in the next uh, 48 hours again at http uh, colon double slash bit dot ly slash 2011 stress. Uh, you'll find that there. So I want to thank you for taking the time to, to be uh, with me today. Please, whether you get this monograph or report or not, be sure to pay close attention to the markets between the 26th and the 31st of August. This is a high-stress time. We will be seeing some interesting action, I'm sure, and would like you to be able to take advantage of it. But as you do so, exercise extreme caution. One of the big temptations right now is to get overly enthusiastic when we see opportunities 
unfold and that's a big challenge in this particular environment so pay close attention to that if you've got this eclipse report uh, for uh, the eclipses of June and July of this year pay attention uh, to the paragraphs in that on the, the lunar returns uh, to the eclipses that come up uh, around this time frame I think you'll find some interesting cautionary notes there uh, as well so exercise caution uh, 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 do your money management uh, appropriately uh, don't uh, overextend yourself in the positions that you take watch those uh, stop loss orders and look uh, for the opportunities that this uh, situation presents it's certainly not the only time that we'll have opportunities in the markets but there look like there can be some very very profitable ones uh, if you use this uh, time frame appropriately so again my thanks to you for joining us here today I hope this has been uh, informative uh, to you and uh, uh, would appreciate your taking the time to uh, to participate uh, and if you're not already uh, a member at financialcyclesweekly.com encourage you to go there and take a look at our various membership plans especially the gold plus elite program uh, which gives you some one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching opportunities as well and of course you'll find uh, this latest report uh, at http bit.ly slash 2001 stress uh, this is uh, Tim Boss with financialcyclesweekly.com thanks so much uh, for joining us I think we actually made it through without a, a, another mercury retrograde disaster so uh, glad to see that happen and have a great trading week everybody uh, look forward to talking with you soon and encourage your uh, emails and input uh, whenever you have a chance to do so so uh, take good care and we'll be talking with you real soon.